Hello, my name is Kim from Kimber's Corner and welcome to my corner of happiness. In this tutorial, I will be showing you how to make my snuggle up blanket. This is a baby blanket size pattern that measures approximately 31 by 36 inches. However, I have designed this blanket for all the fur babies in my life. You'll be able to find the free written instructions of this pattern linked in the description below. The materials you will need for this blanket is a size 8 millimeter crochet hook or a size L, some worsted weight yarn in two colors, approximately 7 to 900 yards of color A, and 200 to 500 yards of color B. You'll also need some scissors, a darning needle, and if you like to use one, a stitch or row counter keep track of your rows. And you'll also need some form of tassel maker. I like to use this book, but you can use a legit tassel maker, a piece of cardboard, or even your hands. So let's get started. The pattern indicates that you'll chain 90. For the sake of this tutorial, I'll be chaining 20. Now if you wish to make this blanket smaller or larger or into a scarf, chain multiples of two. As long as you have an even number of stitches, you will stay consistent with the pattern. So go ahead and chain 90 or in my case, I'll be chaining 20. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Now this stitch builds upon itself by doing a half double crochet in the first and the last stitch of every row. Then in the middle, I believe it's called the Suzette stitch, you'll place a single crochet, a double crochet, skip a stitch, place a single double crochet, skip a stitch, single double, skip a stitch, and so on. Okay, so for row one, you'll place a half double crochet in the second chain from the hook. So that means yarn over, insert your hook into the chain, yarn over, and pull through the chain. You'll have three loops on your hook, yarn over, and pull through all three. There's your first stitch. Now in the next chain after that, you'll place a single crochet and a double crochet. So you'll insert your hook into the chain, yarn over, pull through, you'll have two loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through two. Next is your double crochet. So you'll yarn over and insert your hook into the chain, yarn over and pull through the chain. You'll have three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two loops, You'll have two loops left, yarn over and pull through both loops. Then you'll skip a chain and place a single crochet and a double crochet into the next. Then skip a chain, then single crochet and double crochet into the next. Now you'll notice I am working into the third loop of my chain, which is this bump on the back rather than the top V of the front and you can work your stitches wherever you'd like to I prefer to work them into the third loop just because when you turn your work and you notice the bottom it looks a lot more prettier so that's just how I prefer to do it but you're more than welcome to do it however you'd like to so this part this stitch is skipped and the next we'll do a single crochet and a double crochet and you'll skip, skip a stitch, single double, skip a stitch all the way until you've reached the end of your chain until it looks like you have three chains left on your hook. And once you've reached the end and it looks like you have three chains left, you really only have two left to work into because this chain accounts for the double crochet space that you've just made. So because we're not increasing and this is a flat work, we're not losing or gaining any stitches. So the skipped, the skipped chain that you did counts for the stitch that went into the chain previously before. So in the end, you have the same number of stitches as your chain and on the top. So we'll skip this chain because that accounts for the double crochet you just made. Place a single crochet in the second to last chain and then place a half double crochet in that last chain. 
and that's row one. Then you'll chain one and turn your work. Now row two is exactly the same, except you're working into the stitches instead of a chain space. So let me show you. You'll have double crochet into the first stitch of the row. Then in the very next stitch, which is the single crochet from the row below, you'll place a single crochet and a double crochet. Then you'll skip a stitch, then place a single crochet and a double crochet. And skip this stitch, then place a single crochet and a double crochet. Now I'd like to show you something. One easy way to tell which stitch you're working into is this it's always going to be the single crochet from the row below. So it looks a little different if you're looking at this bat this batch right here. You can tell that this was the double crochet and this was the single crochet. So you'll always be working into the time the smaller loop of the row below. So we'll skip this stitch and place a single crochet and a double crochet into the next. And you'll do this all the way along until you get to the end. Now we're at the end and it looks like you have three stitches left unworked. Now it works the same as row one, that this stitch belongs to the double crochet that you just made, so that one skipped. Then you'll single crochet into the second to last into the second to last stitch of the row and half double crochet into the very last stitch. And you'll chain one and turn. And on to row three is exactly the same, but we'll go over it one more time just to make sure that you've got it. So in the first stitch of row three and every row here on, you'll place a half double crochet. Then in the very next stitch, you'll place a single crochet and a double crochet. Then you'll skip a stitch and place a single crochet and a double crochet into the next. Then skip, place a single crochet and a double crochet. And skip one, single crochet and double crochet. Skip one, single crochet and double crochet and on until you've reached the end of the row. And once you've reached the end it looks like you have three stitches left. Skip the first one and in the second to last stitch place a single crochet and in the very last stitch you'll place a half double crochet chain one and turn your work. You'll repeat this row until the end of row 10 where we will change to color B. I'll meet you back there to show you how I change colors. Okay. I have worked up to row six, but you will be at row 10. So once you're at the end, we're getting ready to change colors to color B. So you'll as normally place your single crochet into the second to last stitch and go ahead and start your half double crochet that stop when you have three loops on the hook. Don't yarn over and pull through the three loops to finish the stitch, just leave it here. Let's go ahead and cut a long enough strand to weave in your end later and, and go cut color A. Then we introduce color B. What I like to do, part, and this is just the way I do it, but change colors however you're comfortable, is I match up my ends and I go ahead and get my tension on my tension finger ready. Then I yarn over and pull through the stitch with both colors. Then I'll drop my ends, find my color A, and pull it all the way through the stitch. Then I'll insert my hook into color B, find my tension once more, yarn over and pull through, and this counts as my chain for the chain and turn. So once I'm here, I'll pull my hook out and drop the tension. Then I'll find the loose strand for my end, which loop that is, and I'll pull that loop all the way through. Then I'll insert my hook again and I'll turn my work. 
Now I secure my ends with my first and second stitch of the row. So for you, this will be row 11. So you'll yarn over and make a half double crochet over my two ends for that first stitch. Then in the very next stitch, I continue working over my ends and I'll make my single crochet and my double crochet. Then you can either weave in your ends now, but I like to do it later. So I just drop them, push them to the side, kind of tuck them back here so they're out of my way. Then I'll continue with my row. So skip a stitch, place a single and a half double crochet. And continue on for rows 11 and 12 will be worked in color B. And I will show you one more time. So go ahead and do your rows of your color B and I'll meet you back at the end when we're ready to change colors back to color A. Now you should be back at the end of your row 12. So you should have 10 rows of A, this row should be 11, and this row should be 12. So single crochet into the second to last stitch and start your half double crochet that stop here when you have three loops on the hook. So do not yarn over and pull through. Just leave it like this. Then go ahead and grab your scissors and cut color B, leaving a long enough tail to weave in later. Then we'll grab color A again, match up your ends, and find, find your tension. And all I mean when I say find your tension is just act like you're getting ready to make, like pick up your yarn again. Just act like you're getting ready to make your next stitch. Then you'll yarn over with both colors and finish that stitch, so pull through both. Then drop your ends, find color B, the loop of color B, and pull it all the way through. Then insert your hook again for color A, so it should look like this. Find your tension with both strands of color A, and yarn over and pull through, and that counts as your chain one for the chain one in turn. Drop the yarn from your hand and find the loop that is connected with the end that you'll be weaving in later. So find that one and pull it all the way through. Now sometimes you'll get it kind of looking like a chain, but just pull it. You can either leave it in there like this, but I just pull it out, just pull it out. Then insert your hook into the loop and turn your work. Now once more, you'll grab the ends and you'll secure them in your first two or three or, three or so stitches. So that's your chain. You've already done your chain one, so we'll yarn over, insert your hook into the first stitch, and leave your two ends draped over the top. Then yarn over, pull through the stitch, yarn over, and pull through the three loops on your hook. And there's your first stitch of the row, your half double crochet. And then continue working, and just to secure those one more time, so place your single crochet, make sure the two ends are over the stitch, pull through, and finish your single crochet. And then do your double the same way. Then drop your ends and kind of tuck them in your other hand so you can finish with the row. Here's how the blanket will go from here. After you've finished row 22 in color A, you'll change to color B and complete rows 23 and 24. Rows 25 through 34 are color A, 35 and 36 are in color B, 37 through 46 is color A, 47 and 48 is color B, 49 through 58 is color A, 59 and 60 are color B, rows 61 through 70 are color A, 71 and 72 is color B, and finally rows 73 through 82 is color A. You'll have six total stripes of color B and seven total stripes of color A. After you've fastened off and woven in all your ends, it's time to make your tassels. If you're using a book like I am, you'll wrap the yarn around however many times you feel the tassel is full enough. For me and this book, it's about 50 times. Then you'll cut two one to two foot long strands to secure the tassels and go ahead and pull the tassel off your book. You'll cut one end and secure the other in one of the strands. And this makes it so you can tie the tassel onto your blanket later. And you'll tie this tight. 
to make sure the tassel does not come undone. Then you'll take your other strand and tie it tight about an inch or so from the top to make that little bobble. Once you've tied it tight, you'll wrap it around a few times to make it look pretty and tuck it in just to secure it. Now, I don't know how I was able to do it with this darning needle. And it's a lot easier to use a small crochet hook and I have not been able to do this again. <laughs> so this video is my only successful attempt of me pulling it through my darning needle. Don't forget to make four tassels and I'll show you how to attach them. So with the two strings on top, I just find any hole that looks decent enough. So I would probably put it right here. So I'll probably run it through right here. So not quite in the stitch, just kind of in the middle. So grab a tassel and I it's, it should be big enough if you're using an eight millimeter to just pull through, just pull through one. And what I'll do from here, so I'll kind of position the tassel just in the corner and then I'll just tie a really tight square knot or three or four knots just as, you know, just to make it really secure. So really tight knot on there and a really tight knot. Okay, then I'll grab my darning needle and I'll put both ends through the needle. Then all I do is I find the top, squish my needle into the top Kind of turn the tassel upside down, pull my needle through, and pull it snug, and then cut my ends about the size of my tassel. And shake the tassel out, and there you go. And it just kind of fits really nicely on there. All right, I'll show you one more time. So on this corner, you just find a spot where you can insert because it will look different all corners. So I'm going to do, I'm going to choose that tinier hole right there. So I might want to just put it on my needle and just run it through just to get right there. Not quite on the corner. So it, it does, the blank doesn't droop too much, but somewhere in the middle. And then I'll make a real position your tassel and just make a really tight knot. And put the ends back on your needle and push it through the head of your tassel and pull the needle through really tight and cut the strands sure you cut the strands and then shake out your tassel and there you go you've got attached your tassels Thank you so much for watching. Here's a very low quality photo of my cat Coco and my dog Ada enjoying their blankets. I hope whoever you made this blanket for loves it as much as they do. I'll see you next time.